So it's been a little while since we last talked about Logan Paul. Last month I did cover the ongoing drama between him and his former podcast host George Janko. Of course at the top of the year one of the biggest stories to come out was these whole scamming allegations with his CryptoZoo project and all the different things that CoffeeZilla had brought to light. I mean, there is no record of him ever paying those people back from the CryptoZoo project the money that they lost. But do most of his fans genuinely care? I don't really think so. His podcast is back pulling decent numbers. He found a pretty good temporary host in this guy Jeff. And I think a big part in his now new redemption arc and really protecting his reputation has been the fact that he's been such a superstar in the WWE. Because for the people who are into wrestling, you can tell that he's garnered quite a bit of respect because he's able to pull off things in his quote-unquote rookie season that I guess is not common for that sport. His sports beverage company, Prime, has been doing great, and now they've even branched off into an energy drink. And while that did get some negative publicity for a little bit, 200 milligrams per 12 ounces. That's almost as much as six cans of Coke or two Red Bulls. Is there any circumstance which a teenager should have 200 milligrams of caffeine? A normal teenager should not need that much caffeine ever. He seems to have handled that pretty decently. If we think caffeine is as unsafe as people are saying, and by the way, caffeine's in your tea, it's in your soda, it's in your chocolate. But if we think it's really as unsafe as some of these politicians are saying, and if people like Chuck Schumer really cared, then why aren't we controlling this at the point of purchase? But now there has been some new drama surrounding Ellen's grandson. After he recently announced that he would be returning to the boxing ring for the first time since he fought Floyd Mayweather a couple years back, and this time he's apparently going to be fighting this former UFC fighter turned influencer named Dylan Danis. To be honest with you, I'd fight Dylan any day. I mean, Dylan, you're a f***ing How did you go from this talent in the world of BJJ to this guy who hasn't fought since 2019? Well, why not just beat up a YouTuber for a ton of money? I think he just wants to be a social media guy. He doesn't actually want to fight. He's that kid who runs away. He's a clown! These little YouTube options, they're going to see what a real fighter feels like. I guarantee you I knock his ass out. I'm coming off fighting the greatest boxer ever. The next person that I get in the ring with will not walk out of that ring conscious. And Logan's already doing a little bit of trolling from the start, deforming this man's face. From what I understand within the MMA community, Dylan Danis was seen as a once promising fighter, but now he's seen as more or less a joke. He has not had a professional fight in the last four years. And I guess at this point, a lot of people out there think that he's all talk. These little YouTube options, they're gonna see what a real fighter feels like. He's gonna see, oh, hey, I'm gonna, how about, I'm how hurt about him bad, bro? I'm gonna hurt him bad. And to me, it is kind of like, hmm, would I rather be an MMA fighter, training all the time, getting my brains busted in, possible CTE? Or do I wanna troll people on social media, fight someone like Logan Paul every once in a while, and keep my brain intact? Not saying that this guy is any more likable than Logan Paul because he's also shown himself to be quite the dumbass. And so they announced the fight and that's when the Twitter drama really started. We're now here on Dylan Danis' official Twitter page where he has been doing quite a bit of trolling himself. At first it started out very innocent. Just showing this classic meme of this old school emo guy who looked like Logan Paul. But then it quickly gets much more vicious. As this man starts posting all of these different pictures of every single man that Logan Paul's now fiance has ever been linked with. Here you guys can see her with Leonardo DiCaprio. Next she's with who I believe is that guy who was like on some cannibal shit. I don't know if this picture right here is real but this man literally posted a picture of her topless. More pictures of her kissing in another celebrity. I do believe that she is some sort of model, so I'm not surprised that she necessarily has this many celebrity ties. Picture of her with LeBron. Here he says, sir, another photo of her with an NBA player has emerged. We're up to 26 now. Here he posts a picture of Logan Paul's Pokemon card, saying that his only ability is cuck. Here he posts an old clip from one of Logan's videos. A girl is not an object. She is a real life human being, not a girl who gets passed around to the dude with more ball percentage. Just basically doing this type of trolling over and over again with his fiance and all these different men. As you guys can see there, she posed with one of my uncles. 
Apparently this was much to the liking of Andrew Tate, and the list really just kept going on and on as he continued to post picture after picture of this woman. And this is where things start to get interesting because Logan Paul reportedly files a cease and desist against Dylan Danis after he was posting all these different pictures. He tweets out that apparently Misfits is censoring him, saying that he went too far and threatening to pull the fight. He also says, I'm fully committed to this fight and I've been carrying the whole card's promotion on my back. The Pauls and I have had beef since forever. Just imagine how you'd feel. Jake attacked my ex, fabricated stories about me impregnating someone, attacked my best friend's fiance, Logan ridiculed me for years, attacked Floyd's wife, filmed a deceased person, scammed millions, KSI went after my mom, the list goes on. Now I finally get to settle our feud and this whole thing is complete bullshit. We have signed a contract. This isn't a tennis match. This is a fight business. So I guess this is kind of his way of saying, hey, Logan's been a piece of shit in the past, so it's all good. I can just attack his wife. And him calling Logan Paul a piece of shit is like the pot calling the kettle black. Because apparently this guy himself has ran crypto scams. He's ran rug pools. Those have also been covered in detail by CoffeeZilla. And he also just has this reputation for not being a very good person. And I guess this was really Logan Paul's only response to all this drama besides the alleged cease and desist, where he posted a digitally altered image of uh, Dylan Danis kissing Conor McGregor. He also posted this to his Twitter page. If you're so confident in your boy, I got a bet for you. I bet Dylan, but he's a broke bitch. I got a million dollars that says I beat your boy on October 14th. Come on, bro. Come on. I know you caked up. See how confident you are. Imagine all the you can buy, you drug addict. Two dummies, one night, October 14th. I'm you both up. And so obviously in response to this video, you had a lot of people saying, oh, you're willing to put this $1 million on the line, and you apparently still haven't paid back the people from CryptoZoo, you know what gives. All I know is after doing all of this trolling, this man Dylan Danis better not back out of this fight. I think he has been known in the past for kind of flaking at the last moment. But I want to know from you guys, when it comes to online beef, when it comes to boxing beef and boxing promotion, is there stuff that should be off limits? Or do you think that absolutely everything is in play? Y'all let me know what you guys think down below. As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy the Tan Superman. And some other online beef out here needs to be covered, so I'm out. Peace!